There is only one way to find out. We need to uncover the portrait. If it has a gold plume, then this fellow is the king. But if the hat plume is red, then this is the true king. Do you agree? Agreed, your highnesses. Very well. Then, in the absence of Monsieur Le Brun, please uncover the portrait. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no! No, you promised me! Oh. Arrest him. Oh. Take him away. Ah, get him! You treacherous play acting! Oh. 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 Stupid conversation, anyway. <laughs> Damn you, Mr. Beckham. Excuse me, ladies. That will keep him quiet till His Majesty decides what to do with him. Take him away. Louis! Your Majesty, what will you do to him? I shall take your advice, Mother, and that of the Bishop of Varennes, for we are minded to mercy. For the fellow must be deranged, but for the moment do cover his face. I do believe we're required to open the dance in your honour. Me? But wasn't Mademoiselle de la Barriere? Well, she has already spoken for. And we intend to be the most faithful of husbands. Monsieur, I... Monsieur? Such a strange way to address one's husband. But my husband does not think like himself. Enough. Oh, really? How could such a thing be? One might almost believe he'd be replaced. <laughs> and what would your reaction be to such a monstrous event? Well, that would depend. On what? My children. They are the legitimate heirs of the throne. Naturally. They are, of course, our children? Do I have the word of a king? You do. But you also have the word of a man who fell in love with you the first moment he laid eyes on you. Sir, the court is unused to such displays of affection. Damn the court. They can get used to it. <laughs> Mother. My son. We believe we have been unkind as of late, and we do wish to change. So may I have the pleasure of escorting the two most beautiful ladies in France to the ballroom, with a queen on each arm? Is there any doubt that I am the true king? Well, it's definitely yours. Shut up, Athol. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, my congratulations, mesdames et messieurs. How did you do it? I am sure I have no idea what you mean, monsieur. The painting. I paid Le Brun myself to change it to red. Renard told me all about your little plan. How under heaven did you find out that I knew? You knew? Of course I knew. How did you know? I don't know. How did we know? We didn't. We were at the Chateau de la Fair. <clears throat> Louise? I was having my portrait painted. When you, Monsieur Colbert, came to Monsieur Le Brun. So I took steps to make sure he didn't change the feather in the painting to red. Isn't she amazing? No. <laughs> well, I wasn't entirely alone. With all you gentlemen and Constance gone, I had to find another ally. Someone who could leave the palace and waylay Monsieur Le Brun at his favourite tavern. Ooh. But it had to be a man of strength and daring. Someone quick-witted enough to act swiftly with no questions asked. Someone handsome, clever, Brave. Oh, no, I have to kill this person. <laughs> <laughs> May I present to you the saviour of us all? Right. Oh, 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 as to the fate of the imposter. 
But for now, do proceed. You mean he was set to deal for Marguerite with the man? <coughs> Who knows for sure? But one thing for certain is that uh, Philippe reigned as Louis for years and years, and nobody noticed the difference. Monsieur Colbert remained as Minister of Finance. As a good politician, he knew when to admit defeat, but he also knew that a king, whoever he may be, always needs an intelligent and flexible First Minister. <laughs> the Queen Mother never quite got over the shock of that night. She remained at court in a state of semi-retirement. Her relations with her son and her confessor <laughs> were always of the warmest and most affectionate nature. Monsieur Le Brun was paid handsomely to forget his ordeal at the hands of a certain low and mean fellow <laughs> and found, found that, like many artists before him, suffering merely acted as a spur to genius, thus inspiring greater and greater achievements. And greater and greater prices. <laughs> the palace guards, with no one to attack and no longer called upon to be attacked by the musketeers, could have grown bored and discontented. Had it not been for the considerate attentions of the palace staff, who worked diligently to keep their hands full. <laughs> Four thoughts was awarded with a promotion, which he sold, and then addition to the ranks of the nobility, whom he shocked as often as possible. Our thoughts were claimed as title and estates, and many more were added. He and Louise were married, and their children had a curious mixture of godparents, from royalty to tavern keepers. <laughs> became one of the king's chief ministers, and through his majesty's influence and his own piety, soon became a cardinal. D'Artagnan became general in the king's armies and was involved in any number of hair-raising battles, skirmishes and sieges. Always returning to his beloved Constance and their many children, whom Constance looked after with her usual tender and delicate care. <laughs> from his eminence, Monsieur Aramis, that the name be changed, Planchet's Tavern, the cardinal sin, went from strength to strength. <laughs> but just like Athos doted on his children, or D'Artagnan doted on Constance. Or Aramis was devoted to the church. Or oh, Porthos to his wine. <laughs> there were still days when the four of them would forget their elevated positions and new responsibilities. And ride like madmen. Sword in their hands. Honour in their hearts. Because they were closer than brothers. The king's musketeers. The four musketeers. <laughs> 